Hello, welcome back to Cinema Burger, and I bring you movie reviews from a different perspective. Today we're here to talk about the new G.I. Joe prequel movie, Snake Eyes, a G.I. Joe origin story. It stars Henry Golding. It also stars Samara Weaving, Iku Uwis, and Peter Mensa. Now, Henry Golding plays Snake Eyes. Now, this is... A, d a nice role for Henry Golding. He really shows his acting chops in this movie. Because he started out as like in these romantic comedies where he didn't have much to do, but then he was in The Gentleman from uh, Guy Ritchie, and he showed he can like do more comedy or action, and in G.I. Joe he really shows his range of acting. Now, just a brief backstory of this character for the movie's purposes. As a kid, he was on the run with his father. Someone found him and killed his father in front of him, and since then he was going from place to place on the run, trying to get revenge on the guy who killed his father. So he's older now, and he's like working at a fish market because someone wants to hire him, but uh, in exchange for to find his dad's killer, but he's part of like a gang or the triads or something or no it's maybe the yakuza but he says no he doesn't want any part of it because when it comes to present day he's he's in like fights for money basically and uh he meets someone who eventually becomes a uh, storm shadow and they form like a bond he's head of this clan who like protects the world and stuff so and the leader of the other gang was this guy's uncle or cousin who was in line for the head of this clan also. So basically, they uh, he trains to be part of this ninja clan and uh, he forms a bond with Storm Shadow and um, the other people of this clan. It's... What's really nice about this movie is, like, the characters aren't, like, evil for the sake of being evil. All of their decisions are very, like, realistic and based on their emotions. Like, people in this movie are driven by grief and vengeance, and that's a realistic emotion. And even though they feel conflicted about their choices that they make, it's, they let, unfortunately, their vengeance get the better of them, but it's a very realistic reasons for the decisions these characters make. Now also, since this is a G.I. Joe movie also, they they slowly introduce the world of Cobra, G.I. Joe, uh, they introduce Scarlet and the Baroness, but these characters are only there to aid the main story, which is still about Snake Eyes choices about betraying the clan or because he's still secretly working with uh, the original guy who asked him to join a gang and they have to get some device that's like some magic crystal basically but that's not as important but the plot of this movie is very enjoyable the one issue I had with the movie is the action scenes they are very quick cut so you really can't see what's going on now, the director of this was Robert Schweckney. He directed movies like Red and Red 2, but I don't remember the fight scenes being hard to see in those, but this was a big issue I had in this movie. And one of the only issues, to be honest. Now, what surprised me about this movie is that they set up, like, future, the future and bigger world of G.I. Joe and Cobra Commander, but it doesn't overshadow the main plot that's happening in the current movie Snake Eyes, which is very rare these days. In a world of cinematic universes and studios trying to set up future movies that may not happen, it kind of bogs down the current script that's happening. This, it does not happen in Snake Eyes. It stays focused on the main plot at hand, and it's only there to aid that plot. Now, Samara Weaving plays uh, Scarlet, uh, Iku Uwis plays Hardmaster, and Peter Mensa plays Blindmaster. You may 
no Iku Uis from the Raid movies. He's also in Beyond Skyline. Peter Mensa was in 300. Uh, Alien vs. Predator, I believe. Maybe not. He was on Spartacus. And he was in Jason X. He's been in other stuff, but you'd recognize him, I think. Now, what's interesting is there's like three tests to become like a member of this clan. And they're all very like mental, like you think they're going to be about fighting, but they're all more mental based and stuff like that. So who thought, even though this movie is not um, in the same world as the previous two G.I. Joe movies, I can see this movie fitting into that world. Because this is a reboot. But I was very surprised by Snake Eyes, a G.I. Joe origin story. Like I said, I really enjoyed the plot. Henry Golding was great in this movie. I like to see him in more movies where he has to have a variety of range as an actor. Because he has one. Now, I don't know if some people may address this. In the original G.I. Joe, I don't know if in the cartoon he was... Not Asian, but in the, because I don't remember, but in the G.I. Joe movies, he was, like, white, and he didn't, like, he was, he didn't speak a lot, so it's, but he, because he's, like, an outsider in a group of, like, in this clan and stuff. Now, also, if people may remember from the cartoon, Snake Eyes doesn't talk, so I felt like, I'm sure some people may be upset about that, but if you're going to have a movie starring a main character who doesn't speak, it may not do that well. So having him speak and changing the lore of Snake Eyes, I think, worked for this case. Because you're going to watch a movie about a, a silent guy for two and a half hours. Most I feel like most audiences won't can't get into that. So maybe they could in the future, like, have him give him a reason to take a vow of silence or something, but... And he, and he puts on the suit at the very end, because like I said, this is an origin movie. But I think that's fine. Now, I would give Snake Eyes a G.I. Joe origin story. It's between a three and a half and a four out of five burgers for me, honestly. Some, maybe not everyone may agree with that, but what's stopping me from giving it a four, I think, is the way the action scenes are shot. And it's not even the cinematographer either, because he's been doing movies for years. I'm pretty sure. But, uh, yeah, like, you, there's too many quick cuts between the action scenes. You can't see them, really. And I'm sure they're very well choreographed. But the movie also has the leader of this clan, as well, is, like, a female. And all the female characters are strong. There's, like, a head of security in this clan, and they make you think that she's going to fall in love with Snake Eyes, but they don't. So it's nice to have a female character who's not there just to be a love interest for a male character. But, yeah, check out G.I. Joe Snake Eyes. It's in theaters now. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I didn't expect to as much as I did. I'm Scott Berger, and I'll see you next time.